Hi, this is Rich at Marvelous Ministries. On one of my other channels, which is a singing channel, I was listening to a song titled Hurt, Christina Aguilera. It's a song that I feel deeply due to what has happened in my life with my marriage and the hurt that we've all suffered in life. For me, cancer wasn't enough to drive my love away from my wife. As my wife and I got married in October 14th of 2000, she'd already had two bouts of cancer. After she was first diagnosed with breast cancer in 1996, six months after that, her first husband abandoned her with their two children, two years and under. Horrifying to have somebody do that to their wife that supported them through med school and residency and helped set up his practice. He's a pediatrician. But we all have free will. Without that failure, I would never would have met her. I would have never come to, to know her and to experience life fuller than I ever have. So we got married. She had breast cancer. And she will until she dies. And I thought life was going to take her away from me because of cancer. Well, actually, life didn't play fair. See, when we got married, I was told initially that just basic information, probably a 75% chance we'd get a divorce. And then you mix in the other challenges of um, bipolar, Tourette's, ADHD, and and all these other challenges, an instant family, and so forth. An ex that I had to deal with on a weekly basis. And then the numbers looked pretty grim for us. And then in 2010, my wife was diagnosed with stage 4 metastatic breast cancer. More than 20 tumors throughout her body. She had a tumor in her spine between her shoulder blades that they did radiation. And unfortunately... A few years later, she started having problems walking. And then she couldn't walk anymore, couldn't drive anymore. And found out the radiation treatment had fried her spinal cord. And so my wife, during this time of us being married and cancer slowly robbing us of what most people take for granted, she came up with a phrase called new normal. It was hard. We would mourn the loss of every wonderful thing that God made available to us that cancer was stealing from us. But the most important thing remained. The love of my wife. The love I had for her and the love she has for me. Shared day by day, side by side. In this journey down a painful path. New normal. I was thankful I still had her love in my life. Well, I think life got jealous. And when I was rear-ended and suffered whiplash and traumatic brain injury and all the other challenges that came from it, change in my personality, and demoted twice at my career that I thought I was going to retire at. I ended up working there for over 32 years. And that's gone. The love of my wife and the love of my children is gone. My wife and I are still married and separated twice now since the accident or collision, whatever you want to call it. We're still married. I have no desire or intention to divorce her. But it's dreadfully painful, the heartache that I feel, the hurt. My whole family has been blown up my wife, my children, and so much more. And throughout it, Job had a choice. He had friends that were telling him that he should end his life. And I've had some of those dark days. I don't have them currently. They're in the rearview mirror. You see, all I had left inside of me was to help people, fixing cars, fixing things for people, with the gifts, talents, and abilities that I have and that I've developed throughout my life. 
And then I had a deep buried hidden appreciation and love for music and singing, but I was not a public singer. I had sang a solo before, but it's a different kind of solo. It's a solo that the mic was turned down so low, I knew nobody would hear me. God could hear me, I could hear me, and the woman who became my wife could hear me when I was on worship team at church. It was not a, a natural, comfortable fit. I was terrified and fearful and insecure. I've thought of a song titled, Two Fears. There's a good fear, which keeps you alive. Hey, don't jump off that 100-foot cliff. You might die. Okay, so I'll lower it down to 60 or 40 or something like that. I'd still jump off the cliff. Just not the super tall ones that, you know, I could, I could die. But then there's a, a, an evil fear, which is the one of embarrassment, shame, afraid of what people think and say about you doing something that you're not confident in. And that was me singing. Before my wife started our courtship, the fall of 1999, we had gone down to Florida for a pastor's conference, and I was jokingly there as the maintenance pastor. And I had escorted her to the restroom, make sure she was safe, and I heard Journey playing on the speaker overhead, and I kind of looked around at the scene, like, yeah, nobody's around. Kind of metaphorically let down my Steve Perry hair and sang a little bit quietly until the bathroom door started to move, and I instantly went mute. And this woman, who eventually, less than a year later, became my wife, goes, why is the car guy out here? Because I was known at church for the guy to fix cars, help people with cars, my little personal private car repair ministry. And then she said, he's singing, and inside I'm screaming of embarrassment and fear. No, she heard me. <laughs> well, in the fall of 2020, God healed my heart of a vow that I made when I was 20 that I'd never date again from before I was a Christian. That was such a train wreck. I just, I was hurting myself more and more with every relationship and I was hurting the people I cared about and I couldn't do it anymore and so I quit. Well, that vow, I didn't know, imprisoned me. In the fall of 2020, God healed my heart. At least he removed that part. It didn't change the consequences of what had happened in my life. And so here I was staying at a house, probably 10, 8 to 10 miles from where my wife and children were, and watching life go by without them. My oldest daughter got married less than two months after I left the second time. I was not even told about the wedding. But... After God removed that vow, what I was doing was helping people. And then I'd sing to deal with the heartache and pain of what my life had become. December of 2021, it was December th 11th, I auditioned for America's Got Talent Singing. March 5th of 2022, I had a second audition. Didn't make the show. But it was definitely stepping out of the boat. So auditions are open again for 2023. And I'm working on what songs I should sing. I'm working on some originals. And I have a lot of different songs that I love to sing by different artists. Based upon the emotion and the feelings and the pain and the heartache. And the love and the passion of the songs. As I listen to these songs, different artists like Journey... Celine Dion, Whitney, Tony Braxton, Michael Bublé, Elton John, George Michael, all kinds of different ones, A A Christina Aguilera, Adele. I mean, my playlist is rather interesting for a 56-year-old white dude, but uh, it doesn't matter about the people. It's the music. It's the love. It's the emotions. It's the feelings. It's the passion. It's the pain. It's the heartache. It's the struggle. It's the love. And so I'm working on some songs. And throughout this, I've reached back to some, some old girlfriends from the 80s because I felt horrified about how horrible and painful the dating relationships were almost 40 years later. And the song Hurt has a line in it that talks about 
hurting you is hurting me. And I relate this to my Savior. Every time I sin, every time I hurt somebody, I hurt him. Everybody I hurt, it hurts me. I can't change the past. But I can hope and pray that I see that I don't want to be who I used to be. I don't want to be Saul anymore. I want to be Paul. But I don't want to be Paul. I want to be me. The me that God created and desires for me to become. When I quit being who I was and finally become who I am in Christ and Christ in me, loving God first and everybody else, even me. If you don't love yourself or only certain people and choose, Everybody you don't love and yourself will lose. The love that God has for you, he has for me. And the love he gave to me is for me to give to you, to see. That love is the only way to change broken hearts and to change lives. To live your life like Christ, our flesh must die. Thank you for watching yet another long, painful video if you watch it. If you want to have a close, powerful, strong relationship with anybody, whether it's God or somebody on earth, you must invest time. You must show them they're important to you. Jesus, I can't live without you. My life without you could have and should have ended many times throughout my life. A few times it almost did. I'm thankful that it didn't. I'm thankful for my wife and kids. But Lord, my prayer today is what you've hidden inside of me will no longer be hidden, but will grow and break through other parts of my heart. So hopefully one day my new life in Christ will start. Thanks for watching.